Education Secretary Betsy DeVos continues to face criticism following her 60 Minutes interview. She discussed, among other things, school choice, funding and underperforming schools. DeVos defended school choice policies, saying they have a positive impact. She also discussed her plans to roll back what she called, quote, federal government overreach in public education. Emma Howland Bolton is an elementary school teacher in Detroit's public school system and joins us now to talk about this interview. Emma, first of all, thanks for what you do. And um, I want to actually begin our chat with a, a portion of what Secretary DeVos had to say to our Leslie Stahl, specifically her comments on school choice. Let's take a quick listen. Why take money away from that school that's not working to bring them up to a level where they are? That school is working. Well, we should be funding and investing in students, not in school, school buildings, not in institutions, not in systems. And okay, but it, what so about it should the kids be, who are back at the school? It's not working. What about if, those kids? Well, in places where there have been, where there is a lot of choice that's been introduced, um, Florida, for example, the studies show that when there's a large number of students that opt to go to a different school or different schools, the traditional public schools actually, the results get better as well. Emma, what do you have to say about that point? Is, is that true? Um, I'm sorry. I just have to uh, debunk a myth right now, which is kind of being perpetuated by Betsy DeVos and others of her, her ilk, and that is that um, there's some mystery concerning how to fix public schools. There is no mystery. We know how to teach every single child that's out there. Um, we know how to teach kids who have PTSD. We know how to teach kids who are refugees, who are English language learners. We know how to teach to every single learning style. Betsy DeVos is perpetuating this myth that there are kids that we don't know how to teach and that we don't know how to fix the school system, when the reality is what we lack is the political will to publicly fund education. That's it. Um, and all this hand-wringing and confusion and ideas about moving money here or there honestly is a distraction from the fact that we have people who are benefiting from defunding public schools. And so your position essentially is that public schools should receive more government funding. In many cases, states decide to attach that t funding to performance. So do you feel that that mm -hmm. is an inaccurate way to, to measure allocating funds? I mean, what is your suggestion for how to turn Michigan's schools around? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking. Um, so I think that it's it's very clear and it's very obvious. We need an equitable distribution of funding when it comes to schools. Schools that have more challenges should have more funding. What we have is the reverse, where schools who um, have more challenges, who uh, have been historically low performing according to these metrics, um, they get less and less and less funding. And in fact, they're asked to compete with one another. So Secretary DeVos um, really pushes the idea of competition and a competition model as some kind of beneficial education reform, when the reality is that um, we don't need schools to compete with each other for ever decreasing amounts of money. You know, the state of Michigan has systematically divested from public education and other public institutions for, you know, the last 20 years. What we need is to take a really hard look at where this money is going. So, for instance, in Michigan a couple years ago, um, we spent millions of dollars on charter schools that never opened. We have we have uh, some of the most lax charter laws in the country, and the result of that is that we have 40 percent of the for-profit charter schools in the country, in Michigan, and many of them in Detroit, and they've been there for a while, and we can tell that that's not working. And I think School what... Well, I was just going to um, say what's difficult for many people listening and watching is that not all charter schools are the same as well. I mean, uh, we hear them referenced as if it's one kind of homogeneous group. Some of them do perform better than public schools. Some of them do not. There's been corruption reported at some charter schools as well. I want to ask you about one thing that the education secretary said uh, to Leslie Stahl during this interview when she was pressed um, and asked, have you visited any of these underperforming schools um, in Michigan? And the secretary said, no. I have not intentionally visited schools that are underperforming. Leslie Stahl said, maybe you should. The secretary said, yes, maybe I should. What would the secretary see at Michigan's underperforming schools that you think would be enlightening? Well, I have to say that I think that Betsy DeVos's motivation as an aspiring plutocrat and the other ed privatizers that she runs with have two 
things that they're working on here and two kind of motivations. One is the one I talked about, where they actually do financially benefit from defunding public schools. But the other is possibly controversial, but I think it's that um, they're terrified that their children, should we ever have equitably funded schools, might one day have to compete with the schools, uh, with kids who come from the schools that I work at, um, like Detroit Public Schools, where we have some of the brightest, fiercest, most hilarious, talented children um, who are doing amazing things despite what amounts to legislative white supremacy from Lansing. Um, even with all of those roadblocks and all of those barriers to their basic access to an education, they're still doing incredible things. And I think Betsy DeVos doesn't want to see that. She doesn't want to humanize the children whose futures she's stealing um, with these policies that ultimately don't just harm black and brown and poor children, but also are going to harm all of America. To divest from public education is to shoot ourselves in, a foot, in the foot as a country. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, you obviously have very passionate views on this for, for obvious reasons. And, you know, whether there are a public or private uh, or charter school teachers out there, I thank you all for what you do because, boy, to be an elementary school teacher is uh, something else. So, Emma Holland-Bolton, we appreciate your time today. Thanks a lot. Thank you.